Okay, so welcome to Solving Systems by Substitution. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna go through the same six examples that I, all, that I went through in the graphing systems video because we wanna make connections and we already know that the whole point of solving a system is to find where the two lines meet. So you know what that looks like visually, but how do I find the same answer doing it on paper by hand, right? because sometimes graphs are too big. So solving systems by substitution. Um, so how do you solve systems by substitution? Number one, choose one of the equations, okay? Uh, number two, isolate X or Y. So the equation that you choose is the equation that has one of the variables that's easier to isolate. And we'll talk more about that. Number three, plug that into the other equation. So once you isolate one equation, take that isolation and plug it into the next equation. You're gonna solve. And then remember you always have two variables for a coordinate, right? You have an X value and a Y value. So if you found the Y, you're gonna plug in and find the X. If you found the X, you're gonna plug in and find the Y, okay? So let's do example number one, which again is the same example from my last video on graphing systems, okay? So ta-da, I already gave you the answer. So with my students, I always give my students the answers to stuff because I need to know if you know how to do the problem. I don't wanna know if you know the answer. PhotoMath can tell you the answer. I wanna know if you can get the answer, right? So we'll just start off, we're looking at the graph. Um, so again, making connections. I wanna know where these two lines meet. This graph tells me those two lines meet at negative four comma four. So how do I make that happen just doing the math, okay? So first thing is we have to choose an equation. I can either choose the pink or the purple equation. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna choose the purple equation and I'm gonna isolate Y. Why did I choose that equation? Well, because we're really used to isolating Y, right? If you're at this point of the game, you know isolating Y, move the X over to the other side, da 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 So in this problem, isolating Y is the right choice also because there's no coefficient in front of Y. In the pink equation, there's no coefficient in front of the X. It would have been just as easy to do that equation. But since we're comfortable with isolating Y, I'm gonna go with purple. So we're gonna subtract two X from both sides excuse me, and then I'm gonna get y equals negative two x minus four. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take negative two x minus four, and I'm gonna plug that into the pink equation. So the pink equation is x plus four y equals 12. Instead of y, I'm going to place negative two x minus four, because that's what y equals in the purple equation. So I'm gonna do some distribution Okay, so four times negative two X, four times negative four, and I'm gonna get negative eight X minus 16, okay? So look, I color coded it, so hey. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna combine like terms. So X minus eight X, and that's gonna go ahead and give me negative seven X. I bring everything else down, right? And I'm gonna isolate X. So I'm gonna get plus 16, plus 16 on both sides. So now I'm gonna get negative seven X equals 28. And then I'm gonna divide by negative seven, divide by negative seven. I'm gonna get X equals negative four. So now remember, we already knew that, right? Because we can see the answer. So it says X equals negative four. I know I'm doing it right. Yay, me. So, but remember there's two parts to your answer. If you get an X, you have to get a Y. If you get a Y, you have to get the X. So how do you find the second part of the answer? I'm so glad you asked, because that's what we're about to go over. Okay, so I'm gonna take that four and I'm gonna plug it into either of the original equations. Listen to me when I say it doesn't matter which equation you choose. You could choose the purple one or the pink one. Both will work if you did your problem correctly. So I'm gonna draw a line under the purple equation. And I'm gonna set it up in the purple equation. Why the purple equation? Because I felt like it. Um, so I'm gonna plug in X, which we all know how to do already. So I'm gonna get positive eight minus four and then I'm gonna get y equals four. So I have the x value is negative four, the y out value is positive four, my answer is parentheses, negative four comma four, close parentheses. All right, example number two, out of six, okay? Um, oh wait, oh, look, I circled the answer, yay. Okay, example number two, again, we did these problems already if you watched that last video, so I know where they're gonna meet. I know they're gonna meet at two, 
comma three. But what if I wasn't looking at a graph? What if I don't have graph paper? What if those numbers were huge? How could I solve? I'm so glad you asked, okay? So I need to choose an equation. Which equation would be easier to isolate a variable? Well, we like isolating y, but in this case, y has a coefficient, so it's gonna be a step more complicated to isolate y. So we'll choose x, because x is isolated in the first equation and in the second equation. So it doesn't matter which one you choose, we're gonna go purple, because purple's on top. And purple's better. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna get x by itself in this case. Remember, last time we got y by itself. This time we're getting x by itself. It's your responsibility to choose which equation would be easier to get a variable by itself. It could be the x or the y. Um, and in this case, it's just easier to get the x by itself. So I'm gonna subtract 2y from both sides and I get x equals negative 2y plus eight. So now that x is isolated all by its lonesome, I know that it equals negative 2y plus eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that into the second equation, the pink equation. So where the x is instead of x, I'm gonna put parentheses negative 2y plus eight, okay? Uh, there's no nothing to distribute like the last problem, so I'm just gonna rearrange the equation so that the like terms are next to each other. So I just move the negative two y's next to each other. And then when I combine like terms, I'll get negative four y plus eight equals negative four. Um, I'm gonna get the y by itself because I'm isolating variables here, okay? So I'm gonna get negative four y equals negative 12, so I'm gonna divide by negative four, divide by negative four, y equals positive Three. Look, does that match the graph? Yes, it does. So, so far, so good. I'm on the right path. So I'm going to take that variable. I know y equals three, but how do I find x? Yes, it's two because we put the answers on the thing. But like, what do I do now? Well, if I didn't have the answer already, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug it into that uh, any original equation. It could be the purple one or the pink one, but the, the purple one's already on the screen, so it's easier for me to pick that one, right? So I'm going to get x equals negative 2 parentheses 3 plus 6. 2 times 3 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 8 is 2. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. Look at us. We got an answer right. <laughs> okay. Example number 3. So x uh, minus y equals negative 4 and x equals 2. So remember that this is a special equation because I have a vertical line, which is x equals two. Now, what I like about this equation is that x equals two actually already tells me part of my answer because every time you solve a system, you want an x value and you want a y value. But I already got an x value, hey now. so. I, they, I already have half the answer to my problem. So I'm just gonna take x equals two and I'm gonna plug it into the purple equation. Oh, why did that come out of order? Whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna subtract two because I gotta isolate y. I get negative y equals negative six. My students a lot of times forget to divide by negative one because y is not by itself. So here you go. Make sure you do that. So y equals positive six yay us and look at that isn't that where those two lines meet yes it is so you know you're doing it right um example number four both of my examples or uh, equations are already isolated baby i love that i love when they're already isolated so y equals negative two x minus four. I already know what y equals, y is already by itself. So in that other equation, all I have to do is take out the pink y and replace it with the purple. Okay, when both of your equations are already isolated, we're just doing simple algebra. Okay, we just get an x by itself. Bada bing, bada boom. Look at that. What does x equal? Negative one. Does that match the graph? Yes, it does. So then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take that negative one out and plug it into the purple equation. So I'm gonna get negative two parentheses, negative one minus four. Y equals two minus four. Y equals negative two. And does that match? Yes, I have an x value, negative one. Y value, negative two. My proper answer, I don't know about, you. I don't know about your teacher, or how you work, 
My students, if you're watching this, you need to give me an ordered pair, okay, as your answer. Don't just tell me X equals and Y equals. Give me an ordered pair, unless it's a word problem. Anyway, example number five um, out of six. So we're almost done. So example number five is infinitely many solutions. So that means these equations are actually the same line. They look a little funny though. So how can you tell, if I didn't have the graph and I didn't give you the answer, how would you be able to tell that the answer to this problem is infinitely many solutions? Well, guess what we're about to do? Figure that out. So Y is already isolated for equation number one, um, the purple equation. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that into the pink equation. So in parentheses, negative three parentheses, negative two X minus one. I'm going to distribute, okay, that negative three. And when I distribute, I'm gonna get positive six X plus three. And what do we notice about this equation? Well, I notice that my six X matches my six X on the other side. Ooh, that's crazy. And then I also notice that the three matches the three. This equation is the same exact equation on both sides. And if you had a good teacher, you know that when the equation looks the same on both sides, that is infinitely many solutions. It's the same exact line. Yay! <laughs> and then example number six. So what, what you need to take away from example number five is if you're solving the problem, you're doing a dang thing, all that kind of stuff, and you get down to the equation, you're like, whoa, it's the same on the left and the same on the right. Infinitely many solutions. No need to go further. Okay, example number six is no solution. These, these lines never touch, okay? The last two lines were the same line, so they touch everywhere. These two lines never touch. So we're about to do, okay? So first of all, you need to isolate a variable so that you can plug it in, because you can't figure nothing out without that. So I'm gonna take my purple equation and I'm gonna isolate X. Why did I choose X? Because, well, X, um, it has no coefficient, so it's easy to isolate. All I have to do is move that 2y to the other side. I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it into the pink equation where the x is. So negative parentheses 2y minus 8. And then I'm going to distribute that negative, and I'm going to get negative 2y plus 8. And what do I notice? Well, I have a negative 2y and a negative 2y on both sides. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this infinitely many solutions? No. Why is it not infinitely many solutions? Because on the left, I have a negative 6. And on the right, I have a positive 8. Those two things are not exactly equal to each other. So therefore, it's no solution. So if I have the same exact variable, 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 variable part, and the same exact constant on both sides is infinitely many solutions. But in this case, I have the same exact variable, but I have different constants. If you have different constants, same variable, this is a no solution problem. Okay, what am I gonna tell you to do? I'm gonna tell you that what you need to do is take out a separate sheet of paper, go back through these examples, see if you can get them without my lovely help. Okay, um, and see if you really understood the information. And if not, I will catch you in the next one. Later.